Today we are going to be preparing a salt, copper 2 sulfate. So in this topic of salt preparation, there are three different preparation methods that you will need to know. The first one is titration, the second one is precipitation, and the third one is what we will be doing now. So when we prepare a salt like copper 2 sulfate, copper 2 sulfate is actually a soluble salt, as you should know by now based on the solubility table. So whenever we are preparing a soluble salt, we can use this method of adding excess of an insoluble reactant to an acid. So today, since we want to prepare copper 2 sulfate, we need something that contains copper 2 ion as well as something that contains sulfate ion. From our previous topic in acids and bases, you already know that usually the N ion will come from the acid. So since we are preparing copper 2 sulfate, the N ion is sulfate, so we will be needing sulfuric acid. Okay. So the sulfuric acid has already been warmed for you, so this will make it easier. Similarly, because we need the copper 2 ion, the copper 2 ion will actually come from this insoluble reactant, which is copper 2 carbonate. It's a green color powder. So first of all, we will add the copper 2 carbonate to the warmed sulfuric acid. The reason the sulfuric acid needs to be warm is so that you know, the reaction will take place faster. So you can see that the moment I add in the copper 2 carbonate, there's a lot of bubbling, there's a lot of fumes coming out. Do you know what gas is being produced? So as I add more, you can see that the bubbles continue to come out. We call these bubbles effervescence. So the aim is actually to just keep adding the powder as well as stirring it until we don't see the effervescence anymore. Those of you who looked at the, at the sulfuric acid just now, you have noted that the sulfuric acid is colourless, but now you see that the, the solution has changed colour to a blue colour, and this solution is actually copper 2 sulfate solution. Okay. Some of you may notice that the effervescence has stopped, and so you may think that the, that the reaction has actually completed. However, remember that we need to add excess of the insoluble reactant. So if you don't see any excess of the insoluble reactant left inside, this means that reaction actually has not completed yet. The bulk of the solution might still be sulfuric acid, so we need to keep adding. And as long as you see effervescence, it means that the reaction is not complete. It's okay for you to add more of the copper 2 carbonate because remember that we want it in excess. So you just have to make sure that we add in until after the, all the effervescence has stopped, you can still see some green color powder at the bottom. And this is all the excess, the leftover copper 2 carbonate powder. So you can see that actually effervescence has more or less stopped already. So this actually indicates that we are reaching the end point of the reaction. And you can see that there's quite a lot of green color powder left at the bottom. So this shows that there is indeed excess copper 2 carbonate, which is the insoluble reactant, and all the acid has actually been reacted away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it to settle down first, and we'll come to the next part and prepare for the next part, which is filtration. So over here, I have this piece of filter paper. So the filter paper is round and some of you might not really be sure how to fold the filter paper. So firstly, we fold it into half. Then we fold it into a quarter. So your filter paper should look like this, okay, a quadrant. So when we do this, you realize that when we turn it this way, it looks like a cone shape and it looks like it will fit nicely into the filter funnel. 
So what we do is, we take, there are four sides of the filter paper here. We just pull out one side, and there will be a nice conical shape, which will actually fit nicely into the filter funnel. Like this. Okay. So now, you can see this is what I have left. The blue color solution is the copper 2 sulfate solution. This is what we want. What we don't want is the green color powder at the bottom, the excess copper 2 carbonate. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pour this into the filter paper. Okay. And you can see that the blue color solution actually comes out. You have actually learned this before in solutions and suspensions in SEC2 work. The blue color solution that comes out is called the filtrate. Whatever solid is left over inside the filter funnel is called the... Residue. Okay, so this is going to take a while. So you can just see the blue color solution coming out. So while you're waiting for it to fill the finish, we have here deionized water. Deionized water is actually the same as distilled water, it's just pure water. So with this distilled water, this pure water that you are given here, we are going to wash whatever is left here inside the original beaker. The reason being that whatever powder is left here, there's still some liquid left. And some of this liquid left over is actually the copper 2 sulfate solution which we want. So using the deionized water, we're going to wash it off so that we can get as much of the copper 2 sulfate solution as possible. Okay, you just shake it a bit. 